U.S. Senate candidate John Deaton is our guest. Let's go on the record. He's a political newcomer looking to take down a Capitol Hill titan. Can this Republican attorney make the case to oust Elizabeth Warren? The candidate is here. Let's get to it. From WCVB Channel 5, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. All right, welcome to OTR this Sunday morning. Hi, everybody. Maria Stefanos along with New Center 5 political reporter Sharman Sicchetti. Ed Harding is off this Sunday. And joining us at the table is John Deaton. He is running for U.S. Senate as a Republican. He's an attorney, a Marine. He grew up in Detroit, holds degrees from Eastern Michigan University and New England Law Boston. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. All right. Well, let's start. You're new to the state's political scene. We want to help voters get to know who you are. Do you consider yourself a Charlie Baker Republican or a Donald Trump Republican? I consider myself a John Deaton Republican, first and foremost. There is no candidate that you can compare me to with my life experience. If you forced me to pick a Republican, it would be a Republican like Charlie Baker. We are going to Car- force you, Car- so good. I'm glad right. you answered. <laughs> Karen Polito, a central common sense Republican, fiscally conservative, socially moderate, uh, but I'm my own person and, and I think I bring a lot of uniqueness to this race. And you haven't made Donald Trump, President Trump, a focal point of your campaign. How come? Well, there's no need. What I do is he's I... The, he's on po- poised to become the Republican nominee. 100%, but what I'm focused on is retiring Elizabeth Warren. And mm-hmm. let me tell you, what we need to focus on is not so much the messenger, but the 74 million Americans who voted for President Trump, despite the four years of chaos or whatever else, or why? Why did that happen? Why, if the race were today, the, the polls are right, would President Trump be the president? It's because of this broken system. These 74 million Americans are not feeling represented. In it, and I'm giving them an option in the Commonwealth of someone who knows them, has been one of them, struggled with them in life, overcame poverty and all the other things that I bring to the table. Do you consider the events of January 6th an insurrection? Listen, it's a bad day in American politics, that's for sure. And uh, uh, it's unfortunate. And, and so, yes. So the answer is yes. yes. And do you believe that Joe Biden was freely and fairly elected president in 2020? 100 percent. All right, let's move on to immigration, the migrant crisis and the shelter crisis that's impacting Massachusetts. Now, you visited the southern border recently. You've also criticized Senator Warren for not voting in favor of bipartisan legislation to deal with the crisis. In fact, she didn't vote. So what is your border policy? Well, listen, I went to the border and it was enlightening because I wanted to see the root of the problem. And if Senator Warren, who's been awfully silent on this issue. Had she went to the border, I think she would have taken a different approach. We have a national security crisis, but also a humanitarian crisis, what these migrants are going through to get here, this false promise that they've been given. We have to secure the border, we have to end catch and release, and we have to reinstitute our policy with Mexico that asylum seekers will remain in Mexico. Do you know I learned that they're getting court dates 2032 for their asylum cases? That's incredibly. Okay, but you're running for Senate here in Massachusetts. You know what's happening here in Massachusetts. We're spending billions of dollars to house these migrants in emergency shelters. It's the law here. What should change? Well, first of all, or should it change? Well, first, I've been calling Massachusetts ground zero in the illegal immigration problem. You know, it it should change. And I know that there's efforts to make residency requirements. Here's the problem. Combat vets who have served their country come back with PTSD without a limb. They don't get a priority. We have to start taking care of the people here first. But we can't address the problem until we secure the border. That's the first thing we must do. But we're not securing the border now. So you're in Massachusetts. We're in Massachusetts. What do you do now? In Massachusetts, well, you need to get the federal government to stop the bleeding. You have to. That's why I said, and I was critical of Senator Warren, where has she been? Prior well, th- to wait, this presidency, she it, was very vocal. It, it, you know, President Trump put a stop to an immigration deal um, and, and said he wanted to run on it. Well, that's so, President Trump. That's not what I support. I would have voted for the bill. It's not a perfect bill. Let me make that clear. I would want more, but it's better than the status quo. And when you go to the border and learn what I did, we're talking about when you count getaways, 
12 million people have crossed the border. And when I call it a humanitarian crisis, that's exactly what it is when you learn what these people are doing with the, with the cartel and what they're subject to. They've been given this false promise. I, I, I want to just get back to what Maria was talking about, which is the shelter crisis here. Um, you know, state officials say the people, the families who are staying in the shelter system are here legally. And their effort, their hope is to get them to, you know, work permits and to move on. Uh, and they've, they've actually instituted limits for stays. I mean, do you think that's helpful? Well, yes, but what's the problem is when you institute a limit, what's, how do you get that family out? If they don't have a place to go, how do you get them out? Are they going to be forced out? We have to change the law in Massachusetts. In 1983, it's a noble law. When you think about your local government taking care of you when mm -hmm. you have a catastrophic temporary situation, that's noble. But they did not envision a completely open border where 12 million people would cross the border into the United States. Abortion, reproductive rights, um, key issues always but in this election year as well. Since the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade, President Biden has said that he would move to codify the right to an abortion into federal law. Are you supporting that? Yes, I support the laws of Massachusetts. And let me make this clear. I'm a pro-choice Republican. I have three daughters. I am incapable of supporting laws that would restrict their rights or restrict their freedoms. And so when I get to the Senate, I will fight for that. All right. And so the Supreme Court could also move to ac to limit access uh, to the abortion pill Mifepristone uh, here in Massachusetts. Governor Healy, she has stockpiled supplies. What do you want voters to know about your stand on on that sort of thing? When 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 you, there were other issues uh, before the court, for instance, like this. Listen, I think this is where we need to get out of partisan politics and start voting for the who's the best candidate. There are issues like this issue. I will caucus with the Democrats on this issue. There will be issues I caucus with the Republicans. Like what? On the abortion issue that no, you're talking but, about. But on the issues pill. where you caucus with Republicans. What other issues? Fiscal responsibility, balancing the budget. Right now, the government is at a $1.23 trillion deficit every year. You cannot, that's not sustainable. Do you know that we've printed 80, nearly 80% 80 of all U.S. dollars in circulation in the last three years? That's, that is a disaster waiting to happen. We have to get people who are not loyal to a party, an agenda, or mm -hmm. a person who will go to the Senate and do the work that the people need done. And that's someone like me. Let's talk about affordable, um, the Affordable Care Act. President Trump tried to overturn that when he was president. If reelected, he's indicated that he was gonna, he's going to move to change it again. Polls show a growing majority of Americans support access to health insurance. You're a cancer survivor. What's your take on all of this? Listen, uh, I'm, I'm a cancer survivor, but I'm one of the, the lucky ones. Uh, my cancer was 95% survival rate caught when it mm -hmm. was caught. But for 22 years in the Commonwealth, I've been representing people with mesothelioma and lung cancer caused by asbestos fighting against corporations and insurance companies. I sat at their table, so I understand this issue better than most people. So that do you support it? Access, this whole access to health insurance, all, uh, this whole thing? Absolutely. If you look at my announcement video, it was the very first thing that I talked about as an issue. I've been inside the health care. I know what it means to have access to affordable health care, mm -hmm. and it's something that I'll be dedicated to making sure it happens. I want to talk to you about Steward because that's obviously something that's coming up. Um, you know, they're bankrupt, and, and they're likely to auction off their hospitals. I think it's scheduled for the end of June. Uh, it's put a lot of stress on the health system here in Massachusetts. Senator Warren, she's filed legislation. She wants to claw back some of the money from Steward executives, and she also wants to end these lease buyback agreements that, that Steward has done. Um, do you think Private equity's role in health care needs to be limited, as Senator Warren has suggested? Well, what, what we need, Senator Warren's always reactionary. I would ask, where has she been for the last decade? And you want to know the, the people that are getting disadvantaged? The communities where I'm from, where I grew up, I went to Rocks, lived in Roxbury well, my first year. she's been seeking to limit private equity generally for quite some time. But with health care, specifically when it comes to steward, do you think that these types of agreements need to be ended? Well, I think private equity is okay as long as safeguards are placed in uh, that are in place, where every year there's an analysis to make sure that what happened with Stewart doesn't happen again. So I'm completely supportive of placing safeguards that would limit those things.